Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video, I shall be showing you how to work with Pages in Dorico, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. At the top of the right hand panel in engrave mode is the Pages panel. This shows you the pages you have in the selected layout and whether they are left or right handers. And at the bottom of this panel, there's a row of buttons for working with these pages. The first button is for inserting pages. If you have a page selected before you press the button, Dorico will pre-fill the dialog to insert the new pages before the selected page. Simply choose how many pages to insert and, if necessary, set where you would like the pages to be created. You can choose to use an existing master page as the basis of your new pages, or leave this set to none if you would like to insert blank pages. Press OK to insert the pages. The next button is for inserting a page number change. I have set up a project here to demonstrate how page number changes work. It shows the typical structure of a layout that starts with a title page, then has a few pages of front matter before the music starts, here on the seventh page. I'd like the front matter to display its page numbers as Roman numerals, and I do that as part of a page number change. So I shall select page 1 in the Pages panel, and then click the Insert Page Number Change button. We're saying here that from page 1 of the layout, we would like the page number count to start at 1. And then for sequence type, we can choose Roman numeral. I would like the page numbers to be visible. And you can see this additional option to not show the page number on the first page of the page number change, even if that page contains a text frame with a token for displaying the page number. That's all I need for now, so I'll press OK and the page numbers are now displaying as Roman numerals. Next, I need to restart the page number count at the point the music starts. So I'll select page 7 in the panel and open the Insert Page Number Change dialog again. You'll notice the starting page has been pre-populated for us based on the page we had selected in the panel. And helpfully, this label shows us how the page number is being displayed. We want to start from page 1 again, but this time show as a number. So we're ready to press OK, and you can see the page numbers change from Roman numerals to numbers as the music starts. Should the need arise, you can also set up page numbers with subordinates using the last two controls in the dialog. Pages that contain page number changes are shown in the panel with a purple corner. The third button here is for inserting a master page change. This illustrative project has an additional master page defined that has a combination of music and graphics frames set up on each of the facing pages. Let's say we want to switch to using this new master page from page 6 in our layout. Select page 6 in the Pages panel and then click the Insert Master Page Change button. We'll select our new master page and then choose whether this master page should be used on the current page only or from this page onwards. I'd like the master page to persist through the remainder of the layout, so I'll choose the second option. When I press OK, the master page is applied to each page from page 6 onwards. Master page changes are identified by this green marker in the Pages panel. These next two arrowhead buttons are for moving pages with overrides earlier or later in the layout. Let's have a look at an example. I'm just going to insert a new page before page 3 using this text master page that I have previously set up, as I would like a page of text before the next piece begins. However, I now realize that I have inserted it one page early. In fact, I wanted to insert it after page 3. Another example could be that I have added more music earlier in the layout, meaning this text page is now in the wrong place. With the page selected in the Pages panel, I can now move it earlier or later in the layout using these buttons.
until it is in the correct location. The final button is for clearing overrides. You can tell which pages have overrides from the red corner on page thumbnails. Pages are denoted as overridden when there is a deviation from the prevailing master page. So the most obvious way to mark a page as overridden is to modify one or more of the frames or insert new frames. The text page we inserted a moment ago also shows as an override, and that's because although it uses a defined master page, it is not in itself a master page change. In other words, it is interrupting the otherwise clean and persistent flow of first and default master pages. Selecting a page with overrides in the Pages panel and then clicking the Clear Overrides button removes all of the deviations from the prevailing master page so it reverts to using the saved vanilla master page layout. Right-clicking or control-clicking on Mac on a page thumbnail will also give you options to remove overrides as well as remove page number changes and master page changes either for only the selected pages or for all pages. One final tip for you. If you need to copy a frame from one page to the same location on another, select it, then right-click the desired page and choose Copy Selected Frames to Selected Pages. If you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below to let me know you've liked it, and subscribe to our Dorico channel today to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.